It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the NFC South. It's the Saints and the Buccaneers, and it comes your way next. Few better places in the country weather-wise this time of year than this one right here, Tampa, Florida, and beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Today, we've got an NFC South matchup as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. And then for the visiting Saints, you know, most people might not realize this. You talk about defenses against the pass last year. The Eagles Super Bowl team, they were number one. But coming in at number two, these New Orleans Saints. Remember, they're led by a defensive-minded head coach, and he plans really well on that side of the ball. Want to see if they can continue that and find some firepower moving the ball on offense. Just about set for football. Blake Groupie is ready to get us started. And off we go from Tampa. Here's Devin Tompkins on the return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. They go play action. Mayfield. A quick throw there is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. But that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Play fake. Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Second and 10. Now Mayfield running left on the option. And once more, this play going in the wrong direction. The Saints get to him behind the line again. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Well, that one hurts. I mean, it was third down, of course, but now the penalty, and we're back to first down. Yeah, it hurts momentum in a big way, and they built that up here in the early going. Now that leaves the opposition with a first down. That's a mistake you don't want to make at this point in the game. Running out of the gun with White. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 
A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. They go right back to White here on first down. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now a second and six. They stay on the ground with White. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they'll have it first and goal. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. Hat tip to that offensive line. They're clearing some holes even down here deep in the red zone. And that's a nice pickup on the ground on first and goal. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. You got to be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting them a few yards. This opening drive has taken them to the two, but now they come up on a third and goal. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Co Keeft taking it in from two yards out. And the Bucs are on the board first here this afternoon. Right off the bat, they start with a very solid, methodical 10-play drive. And you know me. I tend to look at things from the defensive side. They're coming off the field gassed right away. We're in the first drive of the game. So it's not just what happened, but think of the emotion you carry into a game, then double it with getting a 10-play drive put on you and points scored. They're pretty tired right now. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. the touchdown. Here's McLaughlin to kick off. This take it in at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. It's been fun to watch his development through the years. And right now, what you see is a very competent quarterback who has a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 16. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll set up the screen down to Kamara. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid game. On play action, now Carr. Downfield, and he's got a lobby. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. 
despite writing it down on my notes. I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. On play action, it's Carr. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalties. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw again. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 19. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Boy, a lot of moving parts on this play, but what a nice design to leak the running back out to the left and send him down the field. And a good job spotting him and hitting him for a big play. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Mark that as a gain of 16 to set him up first and goal. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, and some nice running right there. That's what got him the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. Kamara is in. Touchdown, New Orleans. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is, I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. The drive starts with a run by White. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and six. They keep it on the ground. White again. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 46 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Mayfield. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. 
Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. On second down, they'll run with White. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 32-yard line. 27 yards there on a very nice third-down conversion. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. On first and 10, Mayfield. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And the Saints are going to have it here at their own 15. And as we've seen, points have been precious so far, and they just threw some away on that snap. And look, let's face it, as we advance further into this game, that play will be on the minds of everyone who's watching it. They wonder if this is the turning point. Is this the spot where those points were given away and could cost them a ball game? New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Dances by at the 20. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 20, here's the second and five. Here's Carr. He gets it complete to A.T. Perry. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. A good move. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. 
Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Kamara gets it again on second down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong, right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. He'll look to throw. It gets this complete to Shahid. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. Now a play fake, Carr. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Here's second and ten. Alave motioning to the left. And they'll fake the jet sweep there and instead hand to Kamara. About three yards there to the 27. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Card out of throw. Side here going to be incomplete. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. So Card departs and on his Blake Groupie for the Saints field goal. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And his kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. You ready to roll? Gotta have him. Now a second and ten. Now Mayfield. 
Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. On third and one, here's Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down to the 43 second down oh that's a real nice job there by the defensive front they just engaged and held their ground but how about the guy who made the play we often talk about whether they take a good first step or not many times you just don't take any step just get your feet moving get your body going and then once he made the read he was able to make the play second down Mayfield that's complete to his receiver Godwin so give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now we've got a third and three. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. Mayfield looks to throw to Evans on the slant. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains. And really, it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Mayfield on play action. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to pan it. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. Mayfield to throw it. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. And his kick here is good. And that will not us up at 10. So the field goal there counts what winds up to be an 11 play drive. Okay, but that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Ten apiece as the kicks away. 
From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second and a couple. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And he'll earn a couple of tough yards past the 30 to the 31. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Carr. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up a throw. Complete. It's Johnson. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 45-yard line. 23 yards to pick up there. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time, he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. On play action. Now Carr. He completes it to Alave. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. A tenth carry for Kamara. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Alvin Kamara with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Saints have moved out in front. So two touchdowns for him on the ground in this first half, and that one a thing of beauty. And just like his last touchdown run, we saw him be patient. How about his vision where he's able to identify where the opening was? And then how about the escort right down the field all the way to the end zone from his blockers? Groupie able to add the PAT, and that makes it a 17-10 score. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. On the return, here's Tompkins. And he returns this to the 22. So out come the Bucks now. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10.
They'll start the drive with a give to White. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 70 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. A nice toss play there to the left. More than enough room to move the chains. And you know what I love about that play as a broadcaster? Seeing the big guys move. Seeing them get upfield and take out defenders. You know what I hated as a defensive back? What? That exact same <laughs> thing. Seeing those linemen coming downfield, getting ready to blot out the sun. Mayfield throw on target to Godwin here. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that will bring up second down. They go play action. Mayfield. It's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. Two yards on the pickup there. And that'll leave them with a third and two. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he'll get this down to the 36. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. And he'll get it inside the 35. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly, and the play comes to you, and sometimes... You got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. From the 34-yard line here, second down and eight. Throwing Mayfield. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. Mayfield. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed. Unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. And his kick is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now at 17-13. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Oh, some strong running. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. 
Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 31-yard line. He'll start with a give to Kamara. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and one. Again, it's Camara. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. 84 yards rushing now for Kamara. It's a first down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Nine yards is the pick up there. And they'll have a second and one so much of the game today we're looking for hybrid players guys who can do a combination of jobs and anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles we just saw the linebacker make that play there he goes right side touchdown new orleans alvin camara his way to a monster game three first half touchdowns and they are able to add on to their advantage this is becoming quite the half he's had here remember in our pregame meetings they talked about wanting to run the football and staying with it well when you're scoring this many touchdowns there's no reason to go away from it is there they are off to a fantastic start they hope it continues three already for him The point after, good by Groupie. And that pushes the lead up to 11. A drive there of just four plays. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Well, Rashad White and the rest of this Tampa Bay offense going back to work now. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play... You would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. The offense on third down, they've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. That's taken in by Palmer. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. 
Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. It's taken to the 26. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. Well, there you see it. A hat trick of touchdowns, and we're in the first half. I'm betting that he was over there saying, feed me. Yeah, there's no doubt. I got to eat. There is no doubt, and he's real hungry right now, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, let's be honest about the whole thing. We don't have to be on the field to understand what he's telling everyone. Give me the ball. We're locked in with the offensive line. They're taking care of business, and I'm finishing things off. Well, heck, he might be able to turn this into an historic event. We'll see. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Two yards to go, second down. Car. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he is going to have a Saints first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. 164 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. On first and 10, here's Carr. The pass caught by Alave. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A little one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Into the red zone. It's Carr. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Back to Kamara for another catch. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Carn out of throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. And the Bucs are going to take over here on the INT at their own five-yard line. Partner, there's no other way you could describe it because that was absolutely just gut-wrenching for that offense. They were right on the precipice. Points were available. All they had to do was just fall forward, and they were going to put them up on the board. Instead, a long drive ends in heartbreak and a melancholy trip back to the drawing board. I like it when I go a little bit lyrical for you.
They start to drive with White, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's a second and eight. Play fake, Mayfield. Airing this one out for Evans. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. To throw, Mayfield. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. It'll lead to a fourth down. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. Taking a couple yards shy of midfield. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here first and ten. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. Might he be on his way to a record-setting performance here, Charles? Second quarter and the yardage number already ridiculous. And they always talk about just focusing on the next play. But sometimes it's okay to dream big yeah, because they... I'm focusing on the fourth quarter already. I... <laughs> Listen, I don't blame you, though, because we could be witnessing some type of history here, and it's being done by him and, of course, the big guys up front who are creating the holes for him to run through. Yeah, they've all been good so far. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Just need a yard here, second and one. To throw his car. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Trying to get that one to Chris Alave. It's third and short. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Car to throw on third and one. They'll get this out to Kamara. So no gain on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Car going to go on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Saints' decision to go for it backfires. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. Mayfield's throw taken in by Palmer. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in, and they will remain two scores down as the difference holds at 11.
A thousand yard rusher for the first time last year. This is Jamal Williams. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we have reached halftime here in an 11 point contest. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports This has certainly been a report. fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. We just watched a solid first half from the veteran running back, Alvin Kamara. He's up over 100 yards rushing for the game already, and he scored three times as well as they went to him early and often and with good reason. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. Alave holds it in, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They're gonna snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. And that's what this defense is gonna need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's gonna wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Here is third and five. Car going to throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he is going to have a Saints first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On second down, here's Carr. This one taken in by Alave. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 37. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 
Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Back to the ground, it's Kamara. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Second down and four. Here's Carr to throw. And this will be incomplete. Well, the secondary has really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turned into a nice play. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now Carr. And he is caught and able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Williams. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just a third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. They'll run it with Kamara. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Saints take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Groupie able to add the PAT. And the lead is up to 18 now. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 21. They'll start here with a handoff to White and a short pickup to about the 25. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Now Mayfield. Quick throw, finding Mike Evans. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The quick slant, good for a first down, a gain of 12. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield to throw it. 
And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there is just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. It's a six-yard pickup to get him back to the original line of scrimmage with third down coming up. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Mayfield. He throws it on the move but can't connect as that falls incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. And down he'll go at the 25. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And this will wind up as Saints first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On first down, Carr. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Kamara up the middle. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing his car on third down. Under pressure and down he goes. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is fielded at the 27. 13 yards, the tally on the return there. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. The drive starts with a run by White. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? 
win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. And we're at the 41, second and nine. Mayfield looks to throw. Gets the check down throw to White. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. We're well, going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 15. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Here's a second and five. They run it again with Kamara. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Now Carr. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Taken at about the 36. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And a catch right side by Evans. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Mayfield on first down. Out route, and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. Here's Mayfield. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass 
and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. White is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. White going to take this down just short of the goal line. He got three, but could not get the ball over the chalk. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. I don't have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Buccaneers are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. On the return, here's Shaheed. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Car to throw on second down. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with this third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's the Saints. They'll be looking to expand their lead here. They've got the football as we start the fourth. The Saints on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. Here's Carr. 
He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. It doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Car now on first down. He'll find Shahid out to the right. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. A good pick up there, a 22. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, <laughs> stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On first and 10, here's Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. To throw, it's Carr. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Throwing on first down is Carr. Into the hands of Perry, complete. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball in this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Again, it's Kamara. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Brandon, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission. Uh, hadn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and that'll make it second and goal. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And they'll fake the jet sweep there and instead hand to Kamara. 
And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. And this one is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. Good drive last time, really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? why I wouldn't change it? it up until they showed me a reason to do so. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Throw left side, hauled in by Otten. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw complete to Otten. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Got his man complete over the middle. That's Evans. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and six. You don't let him down. To throw, Mayfield. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. First down, here's White. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the 33, here's second and five. Mayfield now. He gets it over the middle to Palmer. 
83 yards receiving now for him on the afternoon as he's got a first down here. He kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. White, he'll try the left side. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. That good for 22 at a first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Mayfield to throw it. Touchdown! Trey Palmer from three yards out. And the Bucs have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free. And his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. He is north of 200 yards. Any time that you can say you're north of 200 yards, you've done something right. Yeah, you're going to get some big check marks on your grade sheet. And you're going to be in heavy rotation on all the highlight shows. And you might even make a magazine cover or two. <laughs> He's hoping for more. The cherry on top, maybe, as this game goes forward. On first down, Carr. It gets this complete to Shaheed. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Trying to get a big strike right there and hopefully tie this game up in the late going. But the coverage was there, and this winds up incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up to throw. His throw incomplete. Johnson the intended target and it's third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Car to throw again. And down he goes, a bucket air sack. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. But many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fielded just inside the 30. 
A nice job getting free on the return for 13 yards. And they will take over first and 10. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And it feels like the momentum has shifted. They scored, then their defense forces that last punt. And now a chance to tie the game on this possession. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. A nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Call that a very strong gain of 24. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. They'll go up the middle with White, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. The play over before it really got started thanks to Pete Werner. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. On second down, they'll run with White. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Mayfield. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield looks to throw. He's got Otten. Five yards, now it's third and five. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Now Mayfield. And he is caught. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. That's not the first time they've worked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hook up again on third down to keep this drive alive. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. They run straight ahead here with White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. I thought they were onto something with their play call and kind of went in reverse a little bit, threw it on first down, then ran it on second down. Not successful either way. What play call do they come up with here on this important third down try? Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. This is third and goal. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And he's got it. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Bucks are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, 
But if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. The extra point, a vital one, and he gets it to go. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Well, the focus goes back to Chris Alave, the Saints offense. And I know that they've double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners out days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They don't go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up for him. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Car to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Here's first and ten. Here's Carr. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. The clock stopped. 50 seconds to play. Second and ten. Now Carr. That's caught by Johnson. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. Here's first down. On the counter, here's Camaro. Brought down at the 20. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Second down, eight yards to go. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And he'll get this down only to the 18. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. Big play looming here. This is third and seven with a crowd on their feet. 
They'll pound it up the middle with Camaro. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. We can't be totally sure that that was by design, but we do know that a lot of kickers like the ball in the right hash in order to kick the field goal. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and 10. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is indeed good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So he's able to come through in a hostile environment, and you'd have to imagine that's the game winner. Yeah, how about that? And the way that this game's gone, you think they really wanted to get to overtime and take their chances there? They wanted to get this thing done. When you're the visitor, you don't want to play into overtime. You want to knock it down, get it done, and go home. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. One last shot for Mayfield here. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 30. And he's in. Are you kidding me? How do you get that? One of the most improbable ways to finish a game. And they do win it on a final play. This one is going to sting for a while. I mean, how do you let that happen defensively? One stop. All right, one stop. I know that it's easy to say that from the booth, but it is. How do you let that happen, partner? That's one of those where sometimes you get overzealous on defense, get out of your lanes, don't take care of your assignments. Let's just go ahead and focus on the offensive guy. Look what they got done. Yeah. They needed to make one play themselves, and they did it. Yeah, that's the reverse side. It was a heck of a play and a heck of an ending to this script. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And yeah, Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one-possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the 